always comes back to the Titanic boa, doesn't it? Millions of views on this channel come from our prehistoric mate, the Titanic boa snake. You love that big snake. You love it so much, you wish it was alive today, right? Well, you may want to take a seat because the reality of living with a slippery apex predator may not be exactly what you're looking for. Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel that loves a cryptid as much as a real historical monster, the channel that enjoys talking about an SCP as much as we do talking about alternate histories. I'm your host, Slytherin Queen Rebecca Felgate, and in this episode, I'm getting snaky as I ask what if the Titan and Boa snake was still alive today? Before we get into this video, I want to know, have you ever seen a snake? I've seen a couple. I actually never saw one when I lived in England, even though I know we have a few. But I've seen a whole load of snakes in Canada. I've seen grass snakes, garter snakes, and water snakes. But luckily, no rattlesnakes, because they're killers. They've all been pretty small, even in modern day standards, so I've never seen a snake that's like really scared me. Do let me know your snake stories in the comments section down below though. Also, do leave a thumbs up on this video and share it with a friend. Check out our description box for links to our sources and for all of the information of people that went into making this video. Stick around to the end, because I'm going to be reading out some of your comments. Okay, Titanoboa babe, what you got? The Titanoboa was first discovered in the lowland tropics of northern Colombia in an area called Carajon. The fossil of the out outrageously big snake was discovered in a coal mine, nicely preserved. These days the land is hot and arid, but back when Snake Bay lived an estimated 58 million years ago, the land was foresty and swampy. The discovery was made in 2009, so really we haven't known about this snake for very long at all. In the 10 years in which we have studied it, scientists have concluded it was between 13 to 14 meters in length, so roughly up to a maximum of 50 feet, which is around the size of a house. The snake was very heavy at 2,500 pounds, so that's around 1,133 kilos. If you guys need a visual, here is one. As part of the Titanoboa Monster Steak documentary, the Smithsonian Channel asks sculptor Kevin Hockley to create a full size replica of this monster snake, and this is what it looked like. Horrifying, right? Big boy snake. The snake was non venomous, which is a big relief, am I right? Although let's not breathe any premature sighs of relief because actually this big snake is a hugger, and by that I mean it will squeeze you until you die. The Titanoboa was a constrictor, thought to be able to crush its prey with a force of 400 pounds per square inch. That's some force. Beyond that, it also has some super massive fangs, all the better for eating you with. These were sharp and needle like teeth for puncturing soft tissues and holding down prey. So what kind of prey would the Titanoboa get down it? It seems that the apex predator ate live crocodiles. Seriously, this snake has no chill. If it could eat a croc, it would absolutely eat you no question. But the good news is, is that snakey baby only had to eat once every six or so months and could easily last a year with just one meal. While the remains of 28 of the snakes were found, it is impossible to know how big the population of Titanoboas were. They survived for just a 2 million long period from 60 to 58 million years ago. I say just, but humans have only been around for one tenth of that time, and look how much damage we have done, and we've spawned. Oh, how we've spawned. The Titanoboa, as we know, lived in what was then a swampy part of Colombia. It shares some common traits with snakes that these days live in the Amazon. I don't think the Titanoboa would be bothering the good people of the Caribbean Colombia if it was still alive today, simply because the conditions have changed so much that it wouldn't be able to exist there, perhaps the reason it went extinct in the first place. If the snake did exist, perhaps it too would live in the Amazon, and I'm sure it would have offed a few humans by now. Also, trekking in the Amazon would be literally the scariest activity you could do ever. Perhaps in the past we would have sent our convicts there just to be killed off by the giant snake. Maybe today there'd be a gruesome survivalist reality TV show in which people try and survive in the wilderness without being set upon by giant snake. As we know, our feeble human bones would have been easily crushed by the snake who would then swallow us whole as a snack. But what about today? Could we take the snake down with bullets? In theory, yes, but we would need a lot of them. The Titanoboa is fast and fleshy. There's a good chance it could swipe at a human a fair distance away before it even got the chance to pull a trigger. The Amazon is the world's largest tropical forest, covering much of Brazil, extending into Colombia, Peru, and small amounts of Venezuela, Ecuador, Bolivia, Guyana, and Suriname. Anyone watching from these countries? How do you feel about snakes? If the snake was still alive and had made the Amazon its home, it would have had a lot of space to breed. It is 
scientists thought that the Titanoboa lived in and around the water. So perhaps the Amazon River would be awash with massive snakes. The Amazon River is of course 6,400 kilometers long, so you know. Ah. People of Colombia, Brazil and Peru may find their water sources pretty terrifying. In fact, had these snakes prevailed over the past 58 million years instead of dying out, perhaps cities like Maunus, which now has a population of 2 million, simply would not exist. If they did, then giant snakes would be a hazard. While this city is absolutely bumping now, there have been population crashes in the Amazon history. Maybe there wouldn't have been any at all if there were giant snakes lurking about. I feel like the main issue here is if the Titanoboa snake was still alive, what else would be surviving and thriving? If it were just the snakes alone, I'm pretty sure we could take them. But what about all its prehistoric friends? Back when the massive snake the size of a bus was reigning terror, there were also giant reptiles and turtles and massive crocodiles. The Titanoboa likely died out because of changing temperatures and a lack of proper habitat. But had it and its massive mate survived, including a seven foot long lungfish, one, the conditions for the evolution of humans may not have been right, but two, maybe we would have evolved, but we wouldn't have been top of the food chain. Maybe we would have been gobbled up. Another way in which the Titanoboa could be alive today is if we Jurassic parked it, like made a huge zoo of old extinct and scary animals for times gone by. Scientists are indeed today working on bringing back woolly mammoths, but if we can learn anything from science fiction, playing god and bringing things back from the prehistoric dead is a bad idea, not least because we may not have as much control as we think we do. So that is that, riddle me this, what would you do if the Titanoboa was still alive? Would we be living in some kind of crazy Hollywood sci-fi fiction world where everyone screams and there are snakes everywhere? Would we bang it up in the Chamber of Secrets? Would Voldemort use it as his familiar? Would it speak parcel tongue? What do you think it would be like to be swallowed alive by such a beast? This channel, as always, does leave a really big bold taste in the mouth, doesn't it? Before we go, I'm just gonna read some comments from a recent video. This was, of course, an SCP flavored life's biggest questions. I asked what if SCP-527 was real? Balmain Richard said, if I had a dime for every SCP video, I would pay for my therapy bill. Same mate, same. Darth Vegetar said, what if all of the extinct Ice Age species came back to life? Mammoths, Neanderthals, saber-tooths, direwolves. I think that's a very interesting question. In the previous video, I did ask people what head they would go for if they could have an animal head in replacement of their own, because we like asking fun questions here. Feral Changeling said, I'd have the head of a unicorn. People in biblical times used to call them destroyers of nations. Hip hip hooray, and on that note, we end the video. Please do leave a thumbs up on the vid and share it with a friend. Click on that big, beautiful notification bell to stay up to date with big answers. I'm your host, Rebecca Felgate. I'll catch you in the next video, but until then, please do stay curious, stay alert, avoid those big snakes, and never ever stop questioning. Yeah.